Well, we had worked on the script for so long, and we felt that we had exhausted every possibility of making it uh, through the point of view of the uh, Bureau uh, of Investigation. I'm talking about two and a half years of work on the script while we were doing other films. And um, myself and Leo came to the decision that the real heart of the story was through Molly, through Molly uh, Burkhart. And that means he shouldn't play, uh, uh, he shouldn't play Tom White, he should play Ernest. So we revised the entire script, and that took actually all the way through during shooting. I must say, um, having worked with Leo and Bob so often, both of them surprised me. I'm not being politic about it. Um, they slipped into uh, they slipped into a way of behaving that most people, good friends of ours who know Bob very well, when they saw the movie, didn't realize it was De Niro until 45 minutes into the film. Uh, Leo, I saw take his performance, take that character, and play every element, um, every variation you could think of, uh, in that character. Um, that a human being could come up with uh, within the context of the story. And uh, so for me, it was extraordinary for both of them. Well, I think it's, uh, first of all, I'm always for the big screen. Uh, and secondly, that uh, in a way, this story was meant to be seen by people in a theater, in an audience, and also a way of rethinking about who we are as a nation um, and who we are in, as human beings, you know? Uh, and so, it's always important, I think, to um, try to deal with aspects of the truth as maybe as unpleasant as they may be. But because they're unpleasant doesn't mean they're going to go away. We came into this movie ignorant in a way. We, of course, knew the story, we all read the book, and we started doing our research. But it really uh, was the, the collaboration with the Osage people that made us understand what the story really was about and the stakes of it, because it's a, it's a culture that's very much alive. So we really wanted to honor that, and, and for that it really meant learning and, and approaching it with innocence, you know, not with an idea of we're gonna make a movie about you guys. It's okay, tell us, tell us what, what's your story, tell us about you, and, and so now we're the ones who translated that into a, a movie and hopefully that's all uh, represented in, in a powerful emotional way. Well for me as a cinematographer understanding the um, relation of the Osage people with with nature for example was a very important thing because uh, it meant that I, I shot certain scenes at times of day that were specific to the moments where the Osage do their rituals for example or pray to the sun, uh, rising sun and at, at, at dawn, right after dawn, or, or a funeral happens at noon, so that's a time of day we shot it. You know, so it was really understanding that relationship with, with the nat natural world. It's a very particular kind of landscape, uh, very open, very relatively flat, you know, there are hills and all that, which influence our framing. We, we decided a, a wide aspect ratio, uh, anamorphic lenses, so it's a widescreen movie. And that is because of the landscape. It's been fantastic working with them and hearing the Osage language. Scorsese has let a lot of the Osage language be heard without subtitles, so people really get a feeling of what it sounds like. That was the great thing, uh, and learning about their culture, of course. I think, you know, we know barely enough about slavery in this country, but we know nothing about what happened to the Native Americans, and it's shocking. And when you think this entire land was theirs, and we just slowly took it away from them unfairly, and uh, that is what people will learn from this movie. The Osage themselves said when they saw it, this is opening the door for us. People are going to see us a different way. And that, I'm so proud to be part of that. It's very important over the years, the films that I've worked on with Marty, it's always very important that we do authentic casting. We had an incredible open call. We saw thousands of people in Oklahoma in, in November 2019, as Ellen just said. And that was, that created the nucleus for our indigenous cast. We cast some incredible first-timers that shine in the film. 
Well, uh, production designers create the world that the director is uh, wanting to film. So it's an exciting job, uh, especially on this one, because uh, it was important to Marty to make a film about the Osage that was true. And I love research, I love history. And uh, there was nothing that would excite me more than to finally honor the, the, you know, the Osage. As a direct descendant of Henry Roan, it's extremely important, and I, I wish that my mom and my grandma could see this. Um, this is a story that has been not told for a hundred years, and we've always known it, and um, it took a Martin Scorsese to come along and properly handle it, and he did it justice. Very open communication. Any question he had about every step of the way, um, I think that was the biggest thing that he just let us all uh, give our input anytime he thought does this sound right, Addy? I'm like, no. And if I didn't know, I'd say, you might need to ask an elder, you know. I'm, um, no, it was, it was an amazing, you kind of saw the, the script evolve like every single day because they just had so much input from the tribe, so. I've always felt that costume was the bridge from the actor to the character. People from the Osage Nation there started bringing me family photographs of people who this story is really about. and. Uh, I just started dressing people right off those photographs. Well, I came on as the lead Osage wardrobe consultant, and so I worked with Jacqueline West, going through research pictures, and then helping dress the principal actors at folding blankets and putting them in their clothing properly. It was so fabulous, and she's so generous, she's, and she really she really cares about authenticity uh, which the entire movie did and that is it's a wonderful thing to be a part of someone who allowed us to have our voice and to be true our authentic selves you know most of our music our native music is uh, centuries old and uh, a lot of our music is tied into uh, deeds that our ancestors did and uh, some of it wasn't appropriate for this movie and so when we started to uh, think about it and what would fit in there, um, me and a couple of my close friends, we uh, decided we would write our own song, sing, make our own song. I translated the script to Osage and I um, worked with the actors and coached the actors' language. And I worked with them on the set. That was a lot of fun and really interesting. It's just part of our culture, and we're really working hard to bring our language back. Uh, we don't have uh, fluent speakers like we used to. So uh, our, we have a lot of young people. I'm a, I've been a high school teacher, and so and one of my several of my students are here actually. So it's good to see them using language and they're all just getting better and better. So we really are bringing our language back and I think that with them seeing it in the movie, it'll really be inspiring to them. I had a great time. They were so gracious. Um, they immersed themselves. They were very um, humble in the way that they would come to ask a question and, and not try to, to be too much. And, um, but at the same time, they took um, constructive criticism with much grace. When we first met, he came in and the first thing he said was, we're going to film here among the Osage people. And right there, he took the, made a bold statement that really made us feel relaxed. And from there, he said, uh, yes, I'll take you up on the offer for, to talk to your language department, your, your culture department and all our traditional leaders. He's talked to our community members. And it wasn't just one event, one dinner, it was a process. The spirit of, of cooperation and the spirit of a good future for us all became more and more present. Even now, today, here in New York City, you can feel this good spirit from this group, all the Osages. Uh, it's all a very positive force, which is what all of us need, including the OSAC. We really appreciate what Apple and, and uh, Imperative, uh, Scorsese, Leonardo, uh, Robert De Niro, and let's not forget Lily. Lily, a Native American, 
she really did great throughout the whole movie. It feels amazing. I am just so grateful that Apple and Kills of Flower Moon reached out to me to be an ambassador of the Osage Nation. I had such an amazing opportunity uh, during all of filming. I was the Osage Nation princess and I was so grateful to be a part of it. I was there on the first day of filming and I got to perform the, um, sorry, the Lord's Prayer in Indian Sign Language. Um, and then on the last day of filming, I was there for the um, the big dance scene, which was amazing. And I'm just I'm so grateful that it's here and it's alive and it's it's being said. I think the most important part was when Martin Scorsese. We held a dinner for Martin Scorsese, and he asked for our opinions and for kind of the path he wants the film to go in. And so he asked for our opinions and what our culture looks like. And I thought that was really really good way to go in. It's a little surreal because, you know, you spend so much time with documents and records. I spent five years in archives studying, you know, transcripts. And then to suddenly see this transposed into a film where you have these incredible actors playing these people, playing Molly Burkhart, playing Ernest Burkhart, bringing the story to life, making you care about the story. Um, you know, I couldn't ask for more. In some ways, I'm just a little bit like any other observer. You're just a little blown away by watching it happen. Well, this was a part of history that outside the Osage Nation for too long was erased from our consciousness. It's one of the worst racial injustices, one of the most sinister crimes to occur in this country. And yet most of us, and including myself, we had never been taught it. We didn't read about it. We had, in effect, excised it from our conscience. So it is so critical that we begin to learn about this history, to begin to restore our past, and in the process, figure out what kind of people and nation we want to be in the future. I think only a company like Apple probably could have told this story properly. You know, they, they basically let us, you know, get truly immersive within the community.